My general rule of thumb when it comes to press conferences is that outside of post-game pressers, press conferences are a monumental waste of time just because the speaker at the podium, given those pressers, generally speaking, will put on a front like politicians, word salad. They'll say a whole bunch of stuff without saying anything at all of substance. For example, Vikings media availability, Quasi Adafo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell talking about Kirk Cousins. They were on the same wavelength, didn't really reveal any new information. They pretty much said, we want Kirk Cousins to be here. We believe that Kirk also wants to be here. We just have to find some sort of middle ground. To where I'm like, NFL insiders, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, Tom Pelissero, these guys, the organization, the leadership with the organization, they're not telling me anything that I don't already know. NFL insiders, give me the real. You guys know what's happening. Tell me what's going down. However, sometimes in press conferences, the speaker at the podium will, on rare occasion, break character. And that happened today, specifically with Kwesi Adafo Mensa. What have we been hearing the last several weeks, the last month or so? Justin Jefferson, trade rumors. Oh, the Vikings, they may trade Justin Jefferson. To which the GM of Minnesota was asked about that. And he responded saying, quote, that is not something that once crossed my mind. You've got a blue chip player, a blue chip person. You try and keep as many of those blue chips as you can. Which Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that he put that to bed. And I understand if you're a Vikings fan, you may have PTSD. We have no intention of trading Percy Harvin, but that was a different regime. That was Rick Spielman. That's not Quasi Adolfo Mensa, at least not right now anyway. Just like we say, scout the player, not the helmet. CJ Stroud shattered the mold for Ohio State quarterbacks. He's looking really good so far. The same thing applies here evaluate the front office executive not the team logo and at the risk of setting myself up to be a prime candidate on freezing cold takes i'm glad he said that it's not going to happen to me he didn't have to do that he could have easily towed the line and said hey we're evaluating all options everything's on the table here we're going to have to figure things out he could have easily done that but he's this has never crossed my mind are you kidding me all of these rumors that have been trickling down, and I think it's for the sake of content generating. Oh, the Vikings, they should trade Justin Jefferson. It would be great for X, Y, and Z teams. Sure, the other 31 teams in the league could use 18, the best receiver in the league. Of course they could. But you have to, when coming up with this sort of stuff, you have to evaluate both sides, not what you think would be exciting as a fan, as a viewer, even as a media member. Oh, what? you? The Vikings should trade Justin Jefferson to this team because that would be electric for the other team. Why would it benefit the Vikings? Oh, they to trade up to pick number three? They don't need Justin Jefferson to do that. I, evaluating both sides and going back to that very topic, trading up. Talked about it at nauseum. I would love for the Vikings to have the number one pick in the draft, but it's not realistic. Why? Because Chicago is likely not to trade the first overall pick within the division if they're going to trade down at all. Washington Commanders, they're likely going to take a quarterback. New owner, new GM, new head coach. Sure, it makes sense. So I'm not even going to talk about that. Pick three held by the New England Patriots so many holes on their roster on the offensive side of the ball and the guy in charge of the roster spent the bulk of his career in green bay's front office the way that they operate there's at least a non-zero percent chance that the patriots may consider trading down so let's talk about that because that's realistic it's easy to say oh the vikings should trade up to the number one pick because it would be great and they could get caleb williams or whoever they're first quarterback on their draft board is. It's easy to do that. You have to evaluate all, well, they could trade up J Justin Jefferson, trade him to the Patriots and get up to pick three, take Jaden Daniels, and then at pick 11, take a wide receiver, pair that receiver with Jordan Addison. That new receiver could be the next Justin Jefferson. Why would you want to draft the next 
Justin Jefferson when you have the actual Justin Jefferson on your team right now? And that, that's just from the national media perspective that's been doing that. And Charlie Walters, Charlie Walters, what have you been doing, baby? From the Pioneer Press. The other day, what was it, yesterday? The day before? Can't remember. Said, do I have the exact quote here? Oh, oh I wish I had it. No, I don't. But I'm going to paraphrase it here. On the Pioneer Press, said there's been a ton of steam regarding the Vikings possibly trading Justin Jefferson. Steam! Bro, when you talk about steam, when it comes to sports, that's, hey, the stove is hot. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the end result is going to be, but something's cooking right now. All right, can you elaborate? Nope. Charlie, you didn't do that at all. You just left it there. There's steam at a potential Justin Jefferson trade. What are you doing? Not only did you not elaborate, Charlie Walters, but you threw that in as some sort of sprinkle in an article centered around the Minnesota Timberwolves. And what happened? That one sentence, that one quote, that everybody went crazy over it. Oh, there's steam, 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 steam. Should we trade for Justin Jefferson? What would it take? And Quasi Adolfo Mensa just shut that down. I believe him when he says, this is ridiculous. We're going to figure this out. I've made promises to Jefferson's representatives. We really wanted to get it done last year. It came super close, but it just didn't happen. It's very difficult after a player's third year, but we're going to continue those conversations. I'm glad Justin Jefferson will be a Viking in 2024 and beyond. Also, in Vikings news, the Minnesota Vikings have hired Josh McCown as their new quarterback coach. Former QB coach Chris O'Hara will now serve as the pass game specialist. Josh McCown, he comes from Carolina, where he served as the QB coach there. And if the knee jerk reaction is, well, Bryce Young, he looked pretty bad his rookie year. What does that say about Josh McCown? I understand if you want to have that immediate analysis. However, when you look at the Panthers as a whole, as an organization, an owner who intrudes, doesn't allow his football people to do to make football decisions without his influence, an offensive line that stinks, a subpar receiving group. Bryce Young was bad, but it wasn't all Bryce Young, which translate, I believe, to it's not on Josh McCown. I don't think that, yes, the hindsight 2020, they should have drafted C.J. Stroud. I don't think C.J. Stroud looks as anywhere near as good as he did in Houston, swapped out this time, revisionist history. I don't think he looks anywhere near as good in Carolina, just because of all those issues I mentioned. But Josh McCown, I mean, a 17-year career, you remember that 2013 season where he took over for the injured Jay Cutler, they had a chance to make the playoffs. If there's any, if there's any potential QB coach, and apparently the Vikings felt the need to upgrade that position on their staff, if there's anybody out there who I believe has a chance to be pretty good, it's Josh McCown. He's been a journeyman his whole career. And my goodness, he was the one, he was the one, I think it was in 2003, my young self, I want to say my sophomore year of high school, three years into being a Vikings fan, when and you're in week 17 of the season, and this dude, the last play of the game, threw a touchdown, ending the Vikings chances at making the playoffs. It's pretty much come full circle at this point, but why would they make this change, you ask? which I say clearly it signals that they will draft the quarterback. That, that When and where they draft the quarterback, that's a whole different topic. We're going to have to see, but they're focused on the rookie quarterback development. Maybe they felt that Jaron Hall could have a shot, but they didn't like the way that he looked, so the quarterback development for him wasn't great. We're going to go ahead and upgrade that position. Where they draft the quarterback, and I understand the if you want to connect the dots that Josh McCown coached 
Drake May when he was in high school. I understand if you want to go that route, but I, it's just it's more, more of a coincidence than anything else. If you were to, say, trade up beforehand and get to the number two pick overall, or dare I say number three, I don't think May makes it that far down. But if you were to trade up beforehand and then hire Josh McCown, then you could say, all right, things are starting to align. I don't think it's anything about Drake May, although I do believe they really want him. Minnesota, this is just them saying, we need somebody that can really, really work with this guy. And I think a journeyman quarterback who spent 17 years in the league, who part of the backup quarterback position is to be able to help your starting quarterback and help him prepare. Learned that a lot from Sean Mannion, apparently. If there's anybody that can do that, it's, I would argue, Josh McCown. I would say Sean Mannion, everything they've said about him suggests to me that he should be a coach. Well, guess what? He is a coach. He got hired by Green Bay's coaching staff. He's going to work under Matt LaFleur. So he's still staying in the NFC North division. But Justin Jefferson, he's not going to get traded. And Josh McCown is the new QB coach for the Minnesota Vikings. What rookie quarterback will they draft? Because certainly they will draft one. We'll just have to see.